It's Sunday morning, yeah, showtime here at the Amelia. I'm Bill Rothermel with my co-host Justin Bell. Uh, make no excuses. This is me. This is, this is kind you, of isn't my it? favorite era of automobiles. I think the the 30s or the what we call the classic era of automobiles. We forget this was a tough time in America. The stock market crash had taken place, yet perhaps the most beautiful cars that were ever built in America were built post-depression. And the 30, specifically really the 32 to 34 era, cars were just over the top and everybody was trying to outdo the other. And the, the expensive automobiles were really trying to um, capture the limited market that was available. I mean, think about it. It's 25 percent unemployment. People are in soup lines getting their meal, and you pull up in one of these beautiful automobiles. Not exactly, Not exactly a smart thing. A bonding experience. Exactly. But, but as you said, the economic impact of these cars was huge. It's huge. Yeah. And we're, of course, next to a Packard here, an 845 Roadster, which is just a stunning car. The next car is an Auburn. This is, uh, was a one-year-only car called the Salon. E.L. Cord owned Auburn at the time, and he was a master at color and marketing and bling. And he I mean, the chose color is to put all of this extra trim on the car. It has bucket seats, a special dash. You can see on the door, at the top of the door sills, the bright trim work. Yeah. It was all to differentiate this car in a very limited market. Another fantastic Packard here, uh, side by side, actually two Packards side by side. This was called the Goddess of Speed. I was going to ask, they are artwork on their own. The mascots or hood ornaments, whatever you care to call them, are just incredible. Another great example of that on this particular Packard uh, is a Packard Cormorant, which was their uh, mascot or insignia, if you want to call and it And these that. are the cathedral grills that you told me called about. Called a cathedral yes. grill because it looks like the roof yeah. of a cathedral, and that's what it was referred to. You see also different kinds of wheels on the cars, the solid disc on this car. Yep. Here we go to the more traditional spoke or wire wheel. This car has what are called artillery wheels. So that's a wooden wheel that's been painted and they were like the wheel you put on cannon yeah. when you were taking a cannon to war. Ergo, uh, artillery yeah. wheel. This is a Lincoln uh, KB. Lincoln's built more V12s than all the other manufacturers combined. Our next car is a Chrysler, which they're in the process of judging right now. This is a Chrysler Imperial. Walter Chrysler never got caught up in the cylinder wars like Packard and Pierce Arrow and Cadillac and uh, Franklin, etc. They stayed with a big, long, straight eight and a beautiful, beautiful automobile. Another Auburn in the case of this car, That's, an Auburn Speedster. And that is unique, that light at the front. There. Those are called wood lights. That was okay. a period accessory at the time. They look fabulous on cars yeah. because of that teardrop design. Very, very cool. And of course, uh, we got to say that today's cars, you have the finance guys the, and purchasing, you have the supply guys and the engineers fighting the designers. Back then, it seems like the designers won. In many instances, instances they did. In fact, that's a great segue. Here you've got Stunning. another Auburn yeah. Speedster. This was designed by Al Leamy for yeah. E.L. Cord at Auburn. Al Leamy was their chief stylist. He was 28 years of age when he designed that car. He was fired and Gordon Burig was hired, and Gordon Burig did the update, which is the style that you see on this car compared to the previous Auburn. Okay. And then we'll end up here at some crazy kinds of things. This is a LaSalle, which was the companion car to Cadillac. Uh, GM felt it best to have every price gap covered on the cars. So there was a gap between Buick and moving up to Cadillac, so they introduced the LaSalle. It was Harley Earl's baby when it came out in 1927. He used the Hispano Suiza as his inspiration. However, the car, because of the depression, did not sell. GM was going to cancel the car. He fought, and a guy on his staff by the name of Jules Agramonte designed this car, which is perhaps one of the high watermarks in automobile styling in America. 
and this car is just over the it's top. It's so over the top. It's over the top. I can see your excitement for it. You picked oh, it love, out I as a... I love this stuff, yeah. I mean, this quite is me. This is what fascinates me most about automobiles. I, I just can't imagine being a working class man or woman trying to survive, as you say, soup kitchens, basically, food stamps, and then someone thunders down the road. Right. Not much of a road either. Right. Past you, it must have really made you feel special about your place in life. Uh, most <laughs> definitely. And a lot of people, you know, they were selective in where they drove these cars. Yeah. They're very common, of course, when you had a flamboyant car, perhaps mm. in Hollywood. But, you know, you're in the middle of a uh, small town USA. You hid the car. So a lot of these cars survived and had fairly low mileage because they were pampered and they were cared okay. for. Yeah. And we see them today. Uh, just one final thing which made me think about, you know, the idea of soup kitchens and bread lines and things. The next car in our line is a Brewster. And this was uh, John Inskip's idea at uh, building a coach built car, so to speak, for the masses. He was the head of Brewster, which was a subsidiary of Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce owned the company. And he said, well, if you don't want to be seen in such a garish automobile, he took a Ford V8 chassis and put this wild teardrop wild. nose on the car and created the Brewster. And it lasted for about two and a half years. And of course, that was not a better mousetrap and it went away. Certainly uh, not the one to get hit by. No, you know, they call that a cow catcher nose or a fountain pen. It looks like a fountain pen. I Pretty cool it. car. I understand why you love these cars so much. and. Just to the fans at home, is this really the type of car that can win, one of these cars can win best of show? Right? Most definitely, because of the uniqueness, the many times they're one off, they only built three or four okay. or one, or, and uh, they have great histories and great stories. And of course, the design stands the test of time. So it's very possible we might see one of these cars as best of show this afternoon. Good segue. Yeah, have fun. That's why they pay you the big yeah, bucks. Totally. We'll be back with you guys in a bit. Thanks for joining us. It's been a lot of fun here at the yeah. Amelia on Sunday. And I'm learning a lot. <laughs>